today we want to try and beat every single Pokemon champion in every single Pokemon game using only electric type Pokemon. We will be swapping out our electric types depending on the generation and if we do manage to succeed there's three powerful trainers we must face at the end to claim victory. If a Pokemon faints it's gone from the whole run and I can't use any items in battle. Full rules are in the description below. Let's get started. First up is Pokemon Fire Red and we have the champion for this game Blue. We do have a Zapdos on our team which is pretty insane but some fun Pokemon too I haven't used like Magneton although his Rhydon could be a massive issue. Blue's lead is his Pidgeot and we lead off with Electrode. Electrode is super fast and Pidgeot being weak to electric means a quick and easy knockout to start the challenge. However second is Rhydon who it probably is going to be an issue. On the Earthquake I swap into Zapdos are only resistant to it. We then hit a Steel Wing which is super effective but our attack stat isn't great as he misses a Rock Tomb thankfully. We attack again bringing him lower as he connects a rock tomb doing high damage and lowering our speed too. Our next steel wing doesn't take him out as he thankfully misses another attack. Redfall restores and this time we land a critical hit steel wing putting him at half. Our next steel wing puts him on his sliver as he misses another rock tomb. Zapdos finally gets to take out Rhydon which is a massive threat to the team. Out next Blue chooses Alakazam. We take a foresight attack and we miss our thunder. So I swap into Magneton on the psychic which we resist. We then fire off a thunderbolt to bring him to about 1 HP HP as we take the future sight attack. Redfall restores Alakazam, but this time we critical hit our Thunderbolt to take him down. Out next, Arcanine, and I swap to Electabuzz on the Flamethrower, but we don't tank it very well. We stay in a Thunder Punch for good damage, but a Flamethrower puts us way too low. I now swap to Jolteon and we take an extreme speed to close to half two before we fire off a Thunderbolt the next turn to take down Arcanine with another critical hit. Blue chooses Executor, the three-headed eggplant next. We fire off a Shadow Ball as he misses his Sleep Powder. We Shadow Ball again bringing him to below half as he misses again. A final Shadow Ball and we still don't do enough damage for the knockout and he finally puts us to sleep. Blue 4 restores Executor now and we swap into Zapdos. We then fire off a super effective Drill Peck putting him to below half before we get put to sleep again. I now burn a turn of sleep as he misses an egg bomb. I burn another turn of sleep as he connects an egg bomb, critically hitting and taking down Zapdos already, putting us at a very early death and a very powerful Pokemon too. That's not good. I send out Electrol to revenge kill with a hidden power ice now and his last Pokemon is a Blastoise, but a Thunderbolt from our mighty Electrol takes him instantly down. That really sucks we lost a legendary so soon, but I predict harder fights to come too. Let's head to Johto. Lance is a champion of Johto and the next we face. We have a Raikou and Lance has mainly flying types, so this could be a clean sweep. Let's do it. Lance leads off with Gyarados and we lead off with Raikou. We can't mind turn one to raise our special attack and defense as a waterfall does close to half to us. We can't mind again and take another waterfall, bringing us super low, but now we can start our carnage. One Thunderbolt destroys his first Pokemon, Gyarados. His Acer level 50 Dragonite can't stand to a boosted hidden power and falls over too. Third is his level 49 Dragonite Dragonite, but it's the same scenario. One attack, one Dragonite down, and his last Dragonite succumbs to the power of our legendary two. Charizard then goes down to a Thunderbolt, and then finally Aerodactyl, who then falls to a Thunderbolt 2, giving us a quick and easy sweep over Lance. However, Gen 3 is up next, and this is probably going to be another issue. In Pokemon Ruby, Steven is the champion. He has mainly Rock and Steel types, and I really don't see how we can beat him, at least Deathless. This is going to be rough. Steven's lead is Skarmory, and we lead off with Magnus. Magneton. It's a super easy start as Skarmory is weak to electric and falls to a single Thunderbolt. But then is Agron. It knows Earthquake, so I supersonic to confuse him, and thankfully he hits himself. We then Hidden Power, which is a misplay as it's resisted, but luckily he hits himself again. Thankfully we've done enough chip damage to him to take him down with a Thunderbolt thanks to his weak special defense. But this now brings out his ace, Metagross. I have zero switch-ins, so I go for a supersonic to confuse him again, and he hits himself in confusion. We Thunderbolt for fantastic damage but he breaks through and one shots Magneton with an earthquake putting us at two deaths. We then send out Jolteon and his berry activates meaning Jolteon can take him out with a Thunderbolt. Next is Claydol. Once again zero switchings. Our Shadow Ball doesn't even do half to him as an earthquake nearly takes us out. We Shadow Ball again to bring him lower before Jolteon falls to an earthquake putting us at three deaths. I now send out Manetric and we can take down Claydol with a hidden power. Steven then chooses Cradilly. I go for a charge as he Giga Drains for a little, and 
and then with our boosted Thunderbolt, the next turn does over half as we get confused. I try to go for a charge again, but we hit ourselves in confusion, and a Sludge Bomb puts us super low. We've got to switch to into Ampharos, I go, as a Giga Drain doesn't do too much to us. We then hit a super effective Iron Tail to take down the Ancient Grass Pokemon. This leaves his final Pokemon, or Moldo, the Ancient Bug. We Iron Tail for fantastic damage, surviving Ancient Power too. Our Moldo gets static, and we take him down with an Iron Tail beating Steven but losing two Pokemon in the process. That was rough, but our second Hoenn champion should be a bit easier. Our second champion for Generation 3 is Wallace. He's a water type specialist and we're an electric type specialist, so I'm expecting to win this, but you never know. Wallace's lead is a powerful Waylord and we lead off with Minin. Don't take our size for weakness as the Thunder Punch brings a whale super low as he goes for a water spout, now not doing anything near what it would. Wallace full restores a whale and we Thunder Punch again to bring him back down. Wallace now predicts us and swaps into Whiskash as we go for a dynamic punch and we land it. This move has a 100% chance to cause confusion so that's awesome and it does good damage too. We now hit a very weak hidden power and Whiskash hits himself in confusion. We connect another dynamic punch but Whiskash breaks through, hits an earthquake and kills our mining instantly putting us at 4 deaths. We now swap into Manetric who has HP on him and we can take out Whiskash in one more attack. Then Wallace sends out Gyarados, but a Thunderbolt means he goes down swiftly. Waylord comes back out, Wallace heals him up, but we just knock him out with a Thunderbolt. Tentacruel is his next Pokemon, and it does survive a Thunderbolt, but it misses a Hydro Pump. So Wallace heals him up, and we just bring him back to the red. We then take out Tentacruel, and this brings out Ludicolo. I opt to go for a charge as he starts setting up double teams. With charge now boosting our electric attack, we connect a Thunderbolt and get the one-hit knockout. This leaves his last Pokemon, Milotic. I charge our electricity again, Milotic goes for a poison with Toxic, we then knock it out the following turn, beating Wallace, but we still lost a Pokemon and I really didn't expect we would. Time to head to Sinnoh. Cynthia is a champion of the Sinnoh region, her team is a powerful one, but we have a really good answer to Garchomp in Rotom Wash. Let's see how we do. Cynthia's lead is Spirit Tomb and we lead off with Electrode. Turn 1 I go for a charge, boosting our special defense 2 as a Dark Pulse doesn't hurt as much now. Then we fire off a Thunderbolt for a one hit knockout. This this brings out a race Garchomp and we have one switch which is Rotom Wash. We dodge the Earthquake thanks to Levitate and then Garchomp hits a Dragon Rush for big damage. We Will-O-Wisp to reduce his attack stat and get off chip damage. He connects another Dragon Rush and our Hydro Pump does big damage activating its berry. He connects a third Dragon Rush putting us really low as Garchomp is just so powerful. We now have to switch so I go into Manetric on the Dragon Rush and it still really hurts us. With a Hidden Power Iso we can take down the monstrous threat. Cynthia sends out Lucario next and it knows Earthquake too, so we swap to Rotom on the Earthquake. Then we double into Electivire on the Psychic that critical hits and lowers our special defense, but an Earthquake from our powerhouse destroys Lucario. Cynthia chooses the Flying type Togekiss next. I swap to Ampharos on the Aura Sphere that critical hits us, so then we swap to Luxray and finally we're at a decent enough HP. We Thunderfang and that's enough to take down the Flying type. Cynthia chooses Milotic next, the Thunderfang brings him low and we snag a flinch. But then we miss our next Thunderfang and we take a Surf to low HP before we get to finally take out Milotic. This leaves Cynthia's last Pokemon, Roserade. I swap to Manetric, who eats the extra sensory. We then go for a Hyper Beam, but even with our great stats, it doesn't take out the frail Roserade, and Manetric falls to put us at 6 deaths. We can then send in Electivire and take down Roserade with an Ice Punch, defeating Cynthia, but once again losing Pokemon. It's time to head to Unova, where two champions await us. First up in Gen 5 is Alder, and like Cynthia, he's got a wide range of Pokemon with good type variety. We now have another ground immunity in Electros, and his move coverage is insane, so I think he'll put in some solid work. Our best lead is Electros into a Selgore. We are slower, and he hits a Bug Buzz for fantastic damage as our flamethrower takes out the Bug type in one attack. Now is Bufalon, and it can still hurt us with Head Charge, so we go for a U turn and go into Stunfisk, who doesn't take the Head Charge as well as I thought he would, and Bufalon takes recoil damage too. I now swap into Ampharos who takes big damage from Head Charge, but now we outspeed the Buffalo and can take him out of a Brick Break thanks to all the recoil damage, but half our team is now low. Next up is a Scavalier. It being 4 times weak to fire means a fire punch just destroys him. Then comes Volcarona. This thing is scary if it sets up. We need to take it down quick. I swap to Electrode as he overheats, but Electrode survives it. I stay in and go for a Thunderbolt for fantastic damage as Volcarona's Bug Buzz doesn't affect us thanks to our ability Soundproof. We Thunderbolt again bringing him to the red and we dodge a Hyper Beam. 
Alder full restores, so we get off another two attacks in the process before Volcarona's had enough and takes down Electrode with an overheat. I can now go into one of our only healthy Pokemon left, Luxury, as Volcarona quiver dances, and we finish it off with a Thunderfang. Next is Drudagon. Our crunch does over half as we survive an outrage. This means we can take it down the next turn with a final crunch, but taking rough skin damage putting us low in the process. His final Pokemon is Vanillix. We go for superpower and it's enough to take out the frail ice cream in one move, beating all dirt but yet again losing an electric type. There's still one more champion in Univer to face. The second champion in Univer is Iris, and the majority of her Pokemon are dragons. Haxorus is scary, having a Focus Sash and Dragon Dance with Earthquake. He could end the run. Iris's lead is Hydreigon, and we lead Galvantua, an actual threat to Hydreigon for once. A super effective Stab Bug Buzz takes down the first of her dragons swiftly, and Iris sends out Drudigon next. I Volt switch into Stunfisk as he goes for a Rock Slide, which we tank nicely. We then set up Stealth Rocks to break Haxorus's Focus Sash and Drudagon Focus Blast, which we tank nicely again. We then Earth Power for fantastic damage and a Rock Slide critical hits us, bringing us really low. With a final Earth Power, we take down Drudagon, and now another threat, Agron. I decide to stay in and scold, but we just miss out on the KO, and we lose Stunfisk to a double edge. You did your job well, Stunfisk, RIP. Now at 7 deaths, I send out Galvantula. Iris full restores Agron, but we Giga Drain to bring him to close to half. I now go for a Thunder, and Agron's low special defense means he falls. Then Iris chooses Archeops, but another Thunder from our Spider and another Pokemon down. Now is a monstrous threat, Haxorus. I cannot let it set up, so I have to stay in and Thunder, and we get the Paralyze. Perfect, as he does in fact Dragon Dance. I Thunder again, but we don't KO it as he goes to a plus two now with Dragon Dance. I Thunder, but even with Compound Eyes, we miss, and Haxorus breaks through Confusion to Earthquake our Spider and killing it putting us at 8 deaths and losing a great Pokemon. Thanks to the paralysis, we should be faster with Plusle, and we are, and we take him down with a Grass Knot, leaving Iris's last Pokemon, Lapras. Plusle connects a Thunder, and we defeat Lapras, beating Iris, and losing two more Electric types. This is pretty hard, but it's time to head to Kalos. Diantha is the champion of Kalos and who we take on next. We've got a Mega Ampharos now, which matches up nicely versus their team. And a shiny Dedene. Let's see how we do. Horlucha is her lead and we lead off with Heliolisk. It's a favourable matchup for our Electric Lizard and we are super quick, which means we outspeed the Luchador Bird and take it out with a Thunderbolt. Second, Diantha chooses Gudra. A Focus Blast is definitely coming, so we've got to swap. We Volt Switch for decent damage and go into our shiny little mouse that takes the attack quite decently. We then outspeed and show our true power with a play rough to take out the bulky dragon in one move. I did not expect that. Then comes a T-Rex. If we took down Gudra, we can take down Tyrantrum, right? Wrong. We do over half and Dedene falls to a head smash. This means Tyrantrum also falls to recoil, so at least Dedene fell for a purpose. Out next is Aurora, the Ice Dinosaur. This is a perfect opportunity to Mega Evolve our Ampharos, something I haven't used in over 10 years. We break the mold and fire off a Focus Blast, but we miss. So Aurora gets up a Reflect, raising his team's defense. The next turn, we do connect a Focus Blast to straight up one hit KO the Ice Dino. Out next is Galgeist. We hit a Dragon Pulse and our Mega Ampharos is just so powerful and Galgeist falls to a single move. However, this now brings out a race Gardevoir. She Mega evolves to a Mega versus Mega standoff, but Ampharos is slower and because of this we eat a super effective Moonblast, putting Ampharos low before a Thunderbolt does great damage but not enough to take it out. We have to swap so I go into Heliolisk who survives a Moonblast. We are super quick so we do outspeed the Mega and we finish her off with a Thunderbolt. Beating Diantha, it's time to sail to Alola next. In Alola, how is the person we fight to become champion? He's always one of the most trickiest. His team really does pack a punch. We do have a Tapu Koko though, so with Electric Terrain, we should be able to do some damage ourselves. How's lead is an Alolan Raichu and we lead off with our shiny Vikavolt. We are definitely slower and a Psychic does hurt us, but a stab super effective Bug Buzz takes down the Psychic Electric type in one attack. Second How sends out Incineroar and this is a problem. Something is about to take a Z move and nothing can survive it. So I choose to 
to go into plus all as House Incineroar goes for the Z move Inferno Overdrive. By dropping a nuke on our little mouse's head, he falls, putting us at 10 deaths. Now we can go into our fantastic Pokemon Tapu Koko and set up the electric terrain with our ability. Even so, we only do just over half to Incineroar and an earthquake puts us on 24 HP, that's not good. A final Thunderbolt and we take down House Starter, but we are weakened now. And then he sends out Tauros. This has Earthquake and it's super fast. Tapu Koko is faster, a Thunderbolt just misses out on the knockout, he survives on 1 HP and then proceeds to take down our Tapu with an Iron Head. That really sucks. We now go into Luxray and pray we can live a hit. However, Halfall restores and we hit a Wild Charge in the Electric Terrain it to one hit knock out the bull, but take a quite a bit of recoil in the process. Hal sends out Crabona Bull the Ice Crab next, but it can't withstand Luxray's power in the Electric Terrain and it falls to a Wild Charge too. We're pretty low now from recoil damage as well. Hal's next Pokemon is Leafeon. I opt to stay in and get off damage with Crunch, but Leafeon is faster and a Leaf Blade takes down Luxray, putting us at 12 deaths and losing yet another electric type. I go into Vikavolt now. Leafeon's faster and a Leaf Blade puts us in the red but a super effective Bug Buzz takes out the evolution and only one Pokemon stands between us moving forward and that's Noivern. We swap to Tolga Damaru on the Dragon Pulse and even though it's resisted it still hurts us. We then get hit by a Dark Pulse putting us on a sliver from a critical hit and a Wild Charge does over half meaning we take ourselves out now to recoil putting the death counter on 13. However we can send out Ampharos who dodges a Super Fang and takes down Noivern with a Dragon Pulse. That was a very close fight and how decimated our electric types. It's time to head back to Kanto. So for Trace in Let's Go Pikachu we are potentially in trouble. We have to use our starter Pikachu and a Magnemite also to bolster our numbers as this could be another run ender. The battle starts off by Trace Mega Evolving his Pidgeot into Mega Pidgeot and we lead off with a starter Pokemon Pikachu. We have really good move coverage thanks to how HMs work in this game. We go for a Zippy Zap that always critical hits for great damage as a heat wave from Pidgeot hurts us badly. Trace now doubles on us into Marowak on our Zippy Zap which he's immune to. We then splish you splash to do around half to Marowak and then we take a Bulmerang putting Pikachu on a sliver. The next turn we splishy splash once more to take down a big threat to our team. Third Trace sends out Vileplume and we have a flying move Floaty Fall. We go for it not doing too much damage as Vileplume charges up a Solar Beam. We Floaty Fall once more bringing Vileplume to the red but we flinch him meaning Pikachu survives. Trace now full restores up his Grass and Poison type and we just keep using Floaty Fall. We bring him back to the red and Vileplume misses his Sludge Bomb thanks to the power of friendship, meaning Pikachu survives and the next turn can finish off Vileplume with a final floaty fall. This brings out Rapidash. We get off some good chip damage with a Zippy Zap before Pikachu falls to a Flare Blitz after putting on some insane damage to Trace's team. We now go into Electabuzz but he's slower than Rapidash and takes the Flare Blitz for massive damage before taking him down with a Thunder Punch. Trace now sends back out Mega Pidgeot and we're just too slow without high AVs and he takes out our Electabuzz with a Heat Wave putting us at 50 15 deaths. We only have a Raichu and a Magnemite left now. We send out Raichu who gets hit by a Heat Wave for close to half and takes down the Mega with a Thunder Punch. Trace only has two Pokemon left, a Slowbro and a Jolteon so we should be home free now. We hit a Thunder Punch on Slowbro doing massive damage as he just sets up a Light Screen. So the next turn we can Thunder Punch once more to take down the Water type. This leaves his last Pokemon and starter Jolteon. It can't really hurt us except for Pin Missile which he outspeeds his own goal for. Raichu survives it as it hits us free times and we dig underground. We then dodge a thunder and proceed to take down Jolteon with a ground move, beating Trace but losing two options again. Time to go to Gala now and take on the next champion. The champion for Sword and Shield is Leon. His team is really strong, but actually so is ours. The amount of electric types in Gala is really high, so I'm feeling very confident. Leon's lead is his Aegis Slash, and we lead off with Toxicity, one of my favourite electric types of this region. Turn 1 Aegis Slash King Shield as I go for a Throat Chop, meaning we don't connect it and he drops our attack by one stage. The following turn, we connect a Throat Chop, doing close to half as Aegis Slash hits a Shadow Ball for big damage and getting the special defence drop as always. Turn 3, we connect a final throat chop while he's out of shield stance and take down the ghost and steel type. This brings out Haxorus though. It's a major threat and has earthquake. Nothing will survive if we swap into it. So I make the hard decision to let Tarsicitry fall here. In hindsight, this limits our options in the next region too though. We now send in a powerhouse. No, not our legendary, Morpeko. We are faster than Haxorus and hit an ice fang nearly taking him out. But Morpeko flinches Haxorus, meaning he survives to see another day. A final ice fang from our 
angry hamster and we take down this enormous threat. Leon chooses Inteleon third as we just swap back to our full mold so our aura wheel is electric and we take it out with one move increasing our speed by one stage two. Leon chooses the ghost dragon type next Dragapult and we're in hangry mode so I should have aura wheeled by ice fanged instead but we flinch this dragon too. Morpeko is a monster. A final ice fang and the ghost dragon falls to our power too. This brings out Mr. Rhyme the dancing Mr. Mime. It's part psychic type and we're back in hangry mode so a super effective aura wheel gets a one hit knockout and increases our speed even further. Now Leon's last Pokemon is his Charizard. He Gigantamaxes but our speed is raised and aura wheel brings Charizard to a sliver as he hits a max overgrowth for big damage and setting up grassy terrain healing us up a little bit in the process. The following turn Leon heals his Charizard so we take no damage and an aura wheel does good damage again. This means turn 3 more Peko can take down Charizard with a final aura wheel. Practically sweeping Leon, what a Pokemon to use. It's time to head to Paldea and Scarlet and Violet's champion. The last champion is Gita for Generation 9 and she has some really unique Pokemon but so do we. We have 3 Paradox forms here to use too so let's beat her. Her lead is a Sparfer and we lead off with Iron Thorns. It's a fantastic start as we outspeed the Psychic Ostrich and deliver a devastating crunch for the one hit knockout. This then brings out Avalug. I stay in and Stone Edge but it's so bulky defensively we don't take it out and an Earthquake just absolutely demolishes our Paradox Tyranitar. We now send out Iron Hands to finish off the Ice Slab with a Drain punch. On Golgo, we swap to Kilowattrel as he just bulks up, but we have Air Slash to bring him to the red as he bulks up again. This seals his fate as our electric bird takes him out with a final Air Slash. Her next Pokemon is King Gambit and we have a pretty good answer to this in Pormot, who's still a nickname V. With only one close combat despite its ability, we take it instantly out and this fight is looking good for us. Her next Pokemon is Veluza, who is weak to our whole team, so I decide to let Belly Bolt deal with a fish and take it out of a single Thunderbolt attack. This leads the last Pokemon Glamora. Gita terastalizes into a pure rock type as our Iron Hands gets hit by an Earth Power bringing us low but a Drain Punch does massive damage to the rock type healing us and activating Toxic Debris. We tank one more Earth Power in the red before dealing the final blow to Glamora with a Drain Punch. Defeating Glamora, beating Gita and every single Pokemon Champion with only Electric types. Or have we? Atop of the snowy Mount Silver is a legendary trainer Red and a champion trainer himself. He leads with a Pikachu and we lead off with Lantern, an electric type I haven't used yet. We are actually faster than Pikachu and a Surf obliterates Red's Ace in one attack. Next is Venusaur. I opt to stay in and Lantern shows us his true power by taking down Venusaur with a critical hit high speed. Third is Snorlax. We Thunderbolt for a good chunk before a Crunch hurts us lowering our defense. We Surf again and a Crunch brings us low after hail damage too. We got to swap. So I go into Raichu who doesn't take a crunch as well as Lantern did. Redfall restores Snorlax and we connect to Focus Blast doing close to half. We Focus Blast again connecting putting Snorlax low as a crunch puts us super low too. I opt to risk the hail damage here and take down the bulky Snorlax with a Thunderbolt and we survive the hail on 2 HP. That was lucky. On Lapras I swap into Pachirisu as we tank a Brian on the swap. We then deliver a Thunder Punch for over half as we take a Blizzard putting us low. A final Thunder Punch and Lapras falls too. This brings out Blastoise. We U-turn and go into Raikou as a Blizzard doesn't do too much to us. With a super effective Thunderbolt, Blastoise falls leaving only one Pokemon left to defeat, Charizard. It's part flying type and Raikou makes short work of him, taking down Red's last Pokemon as he disappears. Team Plasma's N and a champion himself who also has a legendary we need to win to continue. N leads with Reshiram and we lead with our own legendary Zekrom who I haven't used in this run yet. With a devastating Dragon Claw we take down the Reshiram in one swift strike showing our dominance. His second Pokemon Vanillix can't stand to the might of our Zekrom and falls to a single Stone Edge. Third he sends out Archeops. It's part flying type so a fusion bolt demolishes him and we're halfway through his team already. Fourth is Clinkline. I just stay in Infusion Bolt, bringing him low as the Metal Sound reduces our special defense. The next turn, M4 restores, but we just Fusion Bolt to bring him back down. A final electric attack, and Clink Clank falls. This brings out Zoroark, who's a frail Pokemon and falls to a single Fusion Bolt from our Legendary 2, leaving his last Pokemon Caracosta. But there is zero chance it can survive our might, and Zekrom sweets N, pretty fitting. This leaves one more champion left to face. 
Kieran, the most latest champion to be introduced to Pokemon and one of the hardest. This has a focus on double battles. Can we beat every single champion using only electric types? Let's find out. Kieran leads off with Politoed and Dragonite with an emphasis on a rain setup. We lead off with Regilecki and Iron Hands. Turn one, I fake out Dragonite and set up the electric terrain with our Regilecki to raise electric type moves power. This also activates Iron Hands' ability Quark Drive, raising his attack by one stage as Politoed hits a weather ball for massive damage on our Pokemon. The following turn I Thunderbolt Politoed with Regilecki but his Wakanberry reduces it so he takes just over half as Iron Hand's Wild Charge brings Dragonite to a sliver of HP also. Then Politoed Weather Balls puts Regilecki on a sliver of HP as Dragonite's Hurricane takes down Iron Hands. Dragonite then Extreme Speeds Regilecki the next turn to take it down as Raging Bolt's Thunderbolt takes down Dragonite. Politoed hits a Weather Ball into Raging Bolt but it doesn't do too much to us. We now send out Pornmot and Kieran sends out Porygon Z. This is always bad. Politoed helping hands Porygon Z as I Thunderclap with Raging Bolt for big damage as Pornmot actually outspeeds Porygon Z and overkills it with a close combat so we take zero damage this turn and take down a massive threat too. Kieran now sends out Grimmsnarl. Pornmot Wild Charges Politoed to finally take it down and Raging Bolt's Thunderbolt's Grimmsnarl for big damage as he goes for a Spirit Break on Pornmot and after the defense drop, he falls, putting us now at 20 deaths in total. We then send out Belly Bolt and Kieran sends out Incineroar. It's now a 3v3. Incineroar fakes out Belly Bolt and Grimmsnarl sucker punches him, putting him at half HP as Raging Bolt takes out his Grimmsnarl with one more Thunderbolt. Kieran now sends out his last Pokemon, Hydrapple, and Terrastalizes it into a fighting type. Raging Bolt's Thunderbolt does a little chunk as Belly Bolt's Chilling Water doesn't do much damage to Incineroar but lowers his attack. Hydrapple goes for an Earth Power on Belly Bolt, taking him out in one attack, putting us at 21 deaths. Our last Pokemon to send is Kilowattro, it's a 2v2. We air slash Hydrapple for big damage, putting him low as the Thunderbolt brings Incineroar to the red, activating his berry, healing him as Raging Bolt barely survives the darkest lariat. But we got the flinch on Hydrapple. This means the following in turn, Kilowattro can finish Hydrapple with an Air Slash, and Raging Bolt takes down Incineroar with a final Thunderbolt, beating Kieran and beating every single Pokemon champion with only Electric types. So our total death count was 21 for this run, the highest ever, but it was to be expected using a Monotype team and trying to use every Electric type ever in the games, which I think I managed to use most of them. This was more of a fun challenge to do, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any ideas on who you want to see next, let me know in the comments below. If you like what you see, subscribe for more Pokemon content. As always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.